Hi everyone, welcome to the third lecture of the series Kanban filter using Mala. In this lecture, we discuss the basic concept and derivation of the Kanban predictor. Here is the overview. We start with a brief record of the Kanban estimates. Then, we discuss the derivation and the algorithm of the Kanban predictor. Let's start with briefly revising the basic idea of the Kalman estimator. The Kalman estimator gives an estimate of the state vector in terms of its expectation and variance using the available information. The state vector is denoted by xk, which is a random vector, and the estimate of the state is denoted by xk hat, which basically gives the expectation of the state vector. Let the state estimate xk hat at a time instant k is computed using the measurement data up to time instant l. In other words, the sensor measurements or the outputs up to time instant l is considered to be available using which the estimate of the state at a time instant k is computed. We have seen that based on the value of l, the estimates can be classified as predictors for which l is less than k, filters for which l is equal to k and smoothness for which L is greater than K. Now, for Kalman estimators also, we can have these three versions, which are the Kalman predictor for which L is equal to K minus 1, and Kalman filter for which L equal to K, and Kalman smoother for which L is equal to N, where N is the time horizon. In this lecture, we will be mainly discussing the Kalman predictor and the Kalman filter and Kalman smoother will be discussed in the upcoming lectures. Finally, when it comes to the derivation of the estimator algorithms, we will be using the following two approaches. The first one is called the optimization based approach in which the estimator gain is computed by minimizing a quadratic function of the estimation error. Here, basically we use the idea of the minimum mean square error or MMSE which we discussed in the last lecture. Now, in the statistical approach, the estimator gain and variance is computed using the conditional expectation and variance formula that we discussed in the previous lecture. Note that, here these names are used to distinguish the approaches and may not be generalized. Basically, in the optimization based approach, we will be using the concepts from statistics such as expectation, variance, etc. And in the statistical approach, we will be using concepts from the optimization. There are other approaches also for the derivation of the Kalman estimators, like the frequency domain based approaches. But in this lecture series, we will be focusing on these two approaches. Next, we move on to the basic idea and the derivation of the Kalman predictor. In Kalman predictor, the state estimate xk hat at a time instant k is computed using the measurements up to time instant k minus 1. So, in other words, L will be equal to k minus 1. Now, let's consider the stochastic linear system defined by equation 1. So, here we have considered stochastic linear time varying system. So, in which the system matrix AK, the input matrix BK, and the output matrix CK are time varying. But these matrices are assumed to be known. Now, in the case of linear time invariant system, a k will be equal to a, b k will be equal to b, and c k will be equal to c. So, this will be some fixed matrices. We assume that the disturbance, noise, and the initial state vector as Gaussian vectors with mean e of b k is equal to 0, and e of b k equal to 0, and e of x 0 can be non 0, but it is assumed to be known. Also, the vectors x k, d k, and b k are assumed to be independent. So, this basically means the covariance matrix of xk, dk will be a zero matrix, and the covariance matrix of xk and vk will be a zero matrix, and the covariance matrix of dk, vk will be zero. Now, the Kalman predictor is defined as in equation number three, which is similar to the Leuenberger observer, but here we have a time varying gate, which is denoted by lk. In this, this first time is known as the prediction or forecast time, which is based on the model based prediction. And this time is known as the correction or innovation time, which is based on the sensor based correction. 
Let's start with the basic idea of the expectation and variance of affine transformations, which is an important concern used in the derivation of Kalman estimates. Let x and d are two independent random vectors such that e of x equal to 0 and e of d equal to 0. Then we have the expectation of the affine transformation ax plus d will be a zero vector in which we use the linearity property of the expectation and we have e of x and e of d are zero. Similarly, we have e of x into d transpose and e of d into x transpose will be zero matrices since the random vectors x and d are independent which makes the covariance matrices zero. Here e of x into d transpose can be written as e of x minus e of x into d minus e of d transpose in which e of x and e of d are zero. So this will be same as the covariance of x comma d. This will be same as the covariance of d comma x and both will be zero matrices since x and d are independent. Now let's derive the variance of the affine transformation ax plus d and using the definition of the variance we have e of ax plus d will be equal to this in which e of ax plus d will be zero. So this simplifies to expectation of ax plus d into ax plus d transpose. Now by multiplying these terms we obtain this equation and by using the linearity property of expectation this can be rewritten like this in which e of x into d transpose and e of d into x transpose will be zero matrices. So these two terms will be zero. We have e of x into x transpose will be the variance of x and e of d into d transpose will be the variance of d. This gives the final expression of variance of ax plus d as a v of x into a transpose plus v of d. Note that here the independent assumption is the one which simplifies the final expression by making its cross product terms zero. Next, we discuss the optimization based approach for Kalman predictor derivation. We define the estimation error vector xck, which is the difference between the actual state and the estimated state. And the error dynamics can be obtained by subtracting the state equation and the Kalman predictor equation, which simplifies to this. We consider xk hat as the expectation of xk. So we have expectation of xck will be zero. Now, we can derive the variance of the estimation error. So we have v of x e k plus 1 will be equal to this in which the expectation of x e k plus 1 will be a zero vector. So this can be written like this. Now by substituting for x e k plus 1 from equation 6, we get this equation. By multiplying these times and simplifying, we get this equation in which we use the results e of x e k into d k transpose e of x e k into v k transpose, e of d k into v k transpose will be zero matrices. This is because of the independent assumption. This basically makes these cross product terms such as d k into x e k transpose, d k into v k transpose and all these such terms as zero. This simplifies the equation to this equation. So in which we have e of x e k into x e k transpose will be v of x e k. And similarly, e of d k into d k transpose will be v of d k and e of vk and vk transpose will be the variance of vk. Now if we define pk as the variance of xek and qk as the variance of dk and rk as the variance of vk, then we can rewrite this equation as equation number 8. And we call this as the difference Riccati equation or the DRE for the Kalman predictor. Using which we can update the variance of the estimation error recursively. Now in the Kalman predictor, the cost function is chosen as a quadratic function of the estimation error. So we define the cost j equal to the expectation of x e k plus 1 transpose into x e k plus 1, which will be equal to the expectation of phase of x e k plus 1 into x e k plus 1 transpose. Here x e k plus 1 into x e k plus 1 transpose will be an n by n matrix and the trace of that matrix will be the sum of its diagonal elements, which will be equal to x e k plus 1 transpose into x e k plus 1. So this we can rewrite as trace of expectation of x e k plus 1 into x e k plus 1 transpose which will be equal to the trace of variance of x e k plus 1 which we denoted by p k plus 1. So we have the cost function j equal to trace of p k plus 1. 
Now in Kalman predictor, the gain LK is chosen to minimize the cost J. And from the first order condition for optimality, we have the gradient of raise of PK plus 1 will be 0, which results in equation number 10, which gives the expression for the Kalman gain LK in terms of the system parameters and the various matrices PK and RK. Next, we discuss the statistical approach in which we use the conditional expectation and variance equations for computing the Kalman predictor gain and the DRE. Firstly, we denote xk hat as expectation of xk given yk minus 1. So we have xk plus 1 hat will be expectation of xk plus 1 given yk. So which basically means the expectation of the state xk plus 1 given the value of yk. Now using the conditional expectation formula derived in the last lecture, this will be equal to e of xk plus 1 plus lk into yk minus e of yk. Now we have e of xk plus 1 will be equal to this term and e of yk will be equal to yk hat. And from the conditional expectation equation, we have lk will be equal to v of xk plus 1 comma yk into v of yk inverse, in which we can substitute for xk plus 1 and yk. And here also the cross product times will be 0 because of the independent assumption. So this simplifies to expectation of ak into xck into xck transpose into ck transpose and this simplifies to expectation of ck into xck into xck transpose into ck transpose plus rk whole inverse. Here we have e of xck into xck transpose will be the variance of xck which will be pk. So this simplifies to this equation which is similar to the one obtained from the optimization based approach. Similarly, we denote pk plus 1 as the variance of xk plus 1 given by k, which is basically the conditional variance that gives the variance of xk plus 1 given the value of yk. And using the conditional variance equation, we have pk plus 1 equal to variance of xk plus 1 minus lk into v of yk comma xk plus 1. And for substituting for xk plus 1 and yk, this can be simplified like this. So here we have expectation of xck into xck transpose will be the variance of xck which is pk and similarly lk can be substituted from the previous equation. So this simplifies to this equation. So we can show that this equation is similar to the one which is obtained from the optimization based approach. For that we can rewrite the equation obtained from the optimization based approach like this and it is substitute for lk in this equation and simplifies we obtain this equation which is similar to the one obtained in equation 30. Next, we discuss the Kalman predictor algorithm. For the linear time varying systems, we define the sets A, P, C, Q and R, which contains the system matrices, input matrices, output matrices and weighting matrices at each time instant over the time horizon as its elements. Note that these sets are required in the case of linear time varying systems only. And in the case of linear time invariant system, we have this A0, A1 and An-1 will be equal to A. So this set becomes a single matrix. Now in the Kalman predictor algorithm, we start with the expectation and variance of the initial state, which we denote as H0 hat and P0 and are assumed to be known. Then for each time instant K, we use the current system matrices and weighting matrices to compute the Kalman predictor gain LK using this equation. And we obtain YK and YK hat from the sensor measurements and output equation. Similarly, the control input UK is obtained from the controller or the control law. Now, using all this, we compute an estimate of the next state SK plus 1 hat and the variance pk plus 1 using the Kalman predictor equation and the difference Riccati equation. This we will repeat at each time instant until the end of the time horizon n. This algorithm basically gives the estimate of the state vector in terms of its expectation and variance. And in the next lecture, we will discuss some numerical examples and simulations of the Kalman predictor.
that completes this lecture thanks for listening